Greetings everyone, I am very excited to show you this game. Now, um, it doesn't matter what deck am I playing, Andy, who cares? What kind of Andy is it? Is it Stealth Andy? No. Does it matter? Not at all. This is one of the most epic games I have ever played in a long, long time. I am playing Jank, my opponent's playing somewhat less Jank but still Jank Jank. And this is going to be one heck of a crazy battle to watch. I keep my opening hand because it has stuff that I want to install. My first turn will look like it installs Show Gamble, Daily Class, and both zero cost items. This does not give away the fact that I'm playing Switchblade, um, which is my only stealth component by the way, while at the same time setting me up to run servers next turn. With Fairy out, I don't have to worry about uh, any nasty sentries from the Wayland side. Now, there are actually not that many nasty sentries on Wayland side. Aside from those that trash programs like Archer and um, Nebula, both of which I don't have to worry about early game. So maybe installing Fairy was not the right idea. Um, and you can be expect him to be running lots of small agendas because he's Argus security. So immediately on first turn, housekeeping came out and I knew that this was going to be a horrible, horrible match. Criminals really don't like housekeeping and I haven't packed any uh, plus, uh, not plus reads. I haven't packed any currents to deal with that. So my only hope is to steal some agendas on the way, and because of this, I was forced to discard my same old thing. It is the least useful card in my stack, in my I mean in my opening hand, which um, says a lot because all the other cards need to be kept. I need my double silencer to activate switchblade. I need those legworks to get agendas so that I can turn housekeeping off. That's a long run. That's the long run play. So first, I run and I see a checkpoint. And I continue drawing up. Now this is horrible. I shouldn't have drawn here. I realize that I have nothing to do on my fourth click. I cannot install a card because that would force me to trash one of my very important cards. I need the special order to tutor a program. I need the silencer, as I said. So I had to throw away the legwork, which was uh, the duplicate card. You don't want to be throwing away cards like this. This is a one-ton waste. So here, um, yeah, there was nothing more for me to do. I basically just had to run every turn until he kept me out of his servers. He's not raising the R&D eyes, so I'm just going to run it through. Now I try HQ this time. Let's see if he raises it this time. Yes, he does. It's a one cost hunter. Trace tree for attack. I have one link. Big deal. I'll let you trace me. And I elude the trace, which means that if that DRT, which is in the remote there, uh, it probably isn't a DRT, because if it is, he would have pumped the strength of the hunter trace. So that's some logical deductions we can make uh, over his deck, which I'm not very familiar with. I don't know what kind of archetype this is. All I know is that he's randomly advancing, installing and advancing stuff. Uh, I have absolutely no idea what this guy is doing. It's all over the place. Is it a three-pointer agenda? I highly, highly doubt so. He wouldn't have the guts to place a three-point, a five-three agenda on the floor without advancing it for me to steal. That just doesn't make sense. So... Since um, there is no end to run on HQ, I'm just going to let work in. Hopefully, I find even one agenda to turn off that housekeeping. That would be all I wish for. Instead, I access traffic accident, checkpoint traffic accident. So now I get a little more insight as to what he's running. He's running lots of mid damage stuff and traffic accidents there, which means he's probably running mid seasons. Otherwise, he won't be able to stick multiple tags on me to uh, trigger traffic accidents. So now I run R&D. Once again, I'm just going to run R&D every turn until either he raises the ice or I find my Jackson, uh, my agenda. I trash Jackson Howard because I don't want him to power draw into his flatline components. In the meantime, he continues advancing that card to four agenda points. So now there's basically only two things can be at this point. It's either an elaborate trap or it's a government takeover. Now it could be a government takeover because I saw the punitive counter strike mark in his hand. But if you think about it, one or two turns ago, when he installed the punitive naked on the remote. I had roughly the same number of credits as him. Would you install a government takeover in a remote, knowing that if the runner steals it, they will probably be able to elude the punitive counter-strike? I don't think so. So I think this is just an elaborate setup. And as he continues advancing that uh, agenda or trap to seven, agen uh, seven advancement counters, I'm pretty sure now it's a trap. And he's trying to make me think it's a takeover. Usually you only need to advance government takeovers to 6. 
so that you can triple advance them next turn. Seven probably smells like a trap. I'm just gonna let him have it. And for all you know, it might just be a, a Grindel Refinery. <clears throat> if it's a Grindel Refinery, well, I'll let him have it because it's better than me wandering into a 14 damage June button. So here he attempts to score something at 9 advancement tokens and that was when I realized that I'm probably going to lose this game. Yes, I just gave him a 6 pointer uncontested. <sighs> so much for logic. Yeah, uh, that, that, I, that's just a very questionable play. I definitely would have been able to escape the punitive trace if I had ran it early on. Well. What's done is done. Now let's see if I can claw back from the jaws of defeat. Um, I will run through his hunter once again. I see the primitive counter strike. All I want to see, as I said at this point, is an agenda. Turn off housekeeping. Immediately I can start installing all the stuff from my head. Thankfully, the lucky finding came at just the right time. Lucky me, lucky find. I'm now up to 13 credits to match his 9 credits. If I can stay afloat on, on money, that'll be great. In fact, that's probably the only way I'm going to win because. He has Punitive Counter Strike, he probably has drawn his second one already, and I do not have plus creed in this deck. So yeah, knowing my deck, it is completely, utterly weak against Argus Security, so I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm probably not going to win this game, but I'm just going to try my best. Um, I run through his second checkpoint, and bounce off. He's been very generous with the checkpoints, giving me two bad pups to play with, so essentially running through checkpoint is almost free. It cost me 4 to beat the Trace, 2 from Bad Pub and 1 from Desperado. So that means I only need to pay 1 credit each run. And yes, finally after all that R&D running, I am rewarded with a high risk investment. And I immediately clear the tag from Argus Security. Um, the other option here... No, that wasn't an option. Um, yes, you could take the 2 meat damage so that you can spend your last click installing something without housekeeping around. So now this turn I was supposed to install lots of stuff because there's no housekeeping but instead he, it seems like he's trying to sneak an atlas out so I need to run it and I hit a snare. Oh man, that totally looked like an atlas. It seemed like he was very desperate to get something going. And boy, that cost me a lot. I lost my RN interface which I desperately need, wanted to install last turn. If he didn't rush that snare out, I would have installed the RN interface and ran on RD like no tomorrow. Instead, I'm now set back heavily and a fresh housekeeping hits the board. So I'm back to my old constraint ways. Uh, this is ugly. After a double draw, I find an Earthrise Hotel, which will further accelerate my draw, so I'm going to use the Earthrise. And since I'm installing cards this turn, I might as well install the Q Coherence chip. Now, um, just recently, the FAQ has just been published, re-updated, uh, re, uh, and according to... Uh, the netrunner developers, Q Coriolis chip is trash only if an installed program is trash. So if I take meat damage and it snipes one of my fairies, Q Coriolis coherence stays on the board. It's only if I use my fairy to break subroutines and it gets trash, will it trigger the trashing of Q Coriolis coherence. Like that. Okay, so here it's obvious he's trying to go for the win. At this point, it just seems like he's only running three and uh big agendas, so that definitely looked like an agenda that he was trying to rush out to me. So I'm going to run it, I'm going to hit the Cerebro Overwriter. So as if him scoring 6 agenda points isn't enough, he's now baiting me into using up all my inside jobs to run his government take uh, to run to his snare, losing 3 cards, taking attack, run into an Overwriter. Now my max hand size is 3, I am completely utterly vulnerable to see Scorch. Just one Scorch turf is enough to kill me. Yeah, this Andromeda is not liking life right now. Life sucks. Okay, at this point, I'm forced to install something, so I'm just going to install my entire head. <laughs> well, there's nothing more I can do really. Um, if I want to give myself options, I need to play all these cards. Earthrise will draw me two more cards next turn, and the fairy will help me break through some nasty ice. Thankfully, the Earthrise draws me into my breaker, the Overmind. So... Seeing that he's trying to score and yet and what seems like yet another agenda, I think it's time I go for it for it. And it really does seem like an agenda this time. Just like the snare, just like the overwriter, because he thinks that I have no options with zero cards in hand. So I install the overwriter and make a run. Now seeing him thinking taking so long to think about this, it must be an agenda. He reses the hunter. And I was about to trash my fairy, but I decided not to. 
Well, with two bad path, I can just let him fire off the trace. Tags don't matter at this point. I'm going to access it. It's a Glen station. I lose the game. He has a punitive counter strike. He has nine more credits than me. I'm not going to survive the punitive. So the only way to do this is to close the game by trying to steal one last agenda before his turn. So I click for a credit and then run R&D. Actually, I should have run R&D. Third click and with fourth click run HQ in case there are agendas in HQ. Uh, but it doesn't matter now. Um, now, yes, I'm just going to... He's not going to rest the outer ice and with the inner ice, I am going to break it. No, I am going to let the trace fire off. Now, this was a mistake from me. I thought checkpoint worked like DRT, that the meat damage was applied after the run. That's not the case. The damage applies when the run is successful. So, knowing that, I would have pumped over right, over mine with 7 credits to break it. But instead, I trace away and I hit the cleaners to win the game. I got hit by a housekeeping as criminal, having to trash so many important cards from my hand that were irretrievable after that. I was playing a deck with no plus street. I'm up against Waylon who's playing Traffic Accident, Punitive Counter-Strike and lots of checkpoints. And it's Argus Security. He scored a government takeover out in the open. I never contested it. He went, then went to install two more remotes, which I contested. One was a snare, I got hit. One was an overwriter. I lost two hand size. And somehow, through all that horror, I actually managed to pull a game win from the impossible. It's not even seemingly impossible. That was not meant for me to win. Wow. If that wasn't epic, I don't know what is. That came out of nowhere. Sure, I got lucky with the R&D access, but then again, I've been hammering his centrals pretty often and he wasn't ending the run on me anyways. But that was some crazy shenanigans going on there. Who needs breakers? <laughs> Just two fairies were all I needed. Well, so that was the game. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thanks for watching.